Namaste and a very, very good evening to all of you. I welcome you to my channel, The Outlier. My name is Mithun. In today's video, we'll be looking at how to create a training data set and a testing data set using IBM SPSS. Even before proceeding, proceeding to demonstrate how to create the training data set and the testing data set in SPSS, may I request you to subscribe to my channel, also like and share my videos. Let me begin by giving you a bit of a background as to why it is important for us to create training and test data set. Many times when we build a machine learning model, the machine learning model is built on the training data set. We do not use the entire base data to train the algorithm. We take the base data and split it into two data sets. The first data set is called as a training data set. And the second data set is called as a testing data set. The training data set, as the name itself suggests, is used to train the model. Once you build the model, you will get results. You can pull out the code and apply the model on the second data set, which is called as the test data set. If the model performance of the training data set and the test data set is consistent, then you can go ahead and give a thumbs up sign to the performance of the model. On the other hand, if the model performance is inconsistent between the training data set as well as the test data set, it means that the model hasn't learned the characteristics well. In SPSS, it is not straightforward. It is not very easy to create the training and the test data set simply because we do not have an inbuilt function which generates the training sample and the test sample. So we will be looking at three-step procedure to create the training and the test data set using the base data. Let me introduce you to the data set. You can see here right at the top, this data set is called as employee data. You can see there are three variables in this data. The first is employee ID. The second is gender of the employee. And the third one is employee salary. This data set is present in the IBM SPSS samples, sample data sets folder. Let me look at the sample size in this particular data set. You can see here, there are 100 records in this data set. I don't want to build the model on this particular data set. I want to split this data set into two data sets. First is training and the second one is test. The question is, what portion are we allocating for training and what portion of the data are we allocating for test? As a rule of thumb, 70% can be allocated for training the data set and the balance 30% can be allocated for testing the data set. So let's use this data to create training data set and testing data set. The first step when you are creating a training data in SPSS is to generate random numbers. How do you generate random numbers? You can click on the transform menu. So this is the transform menu bar. The very first option under the transform menu bar is what is called as the compute variable. Let me click on this particular option. Once you click on this particular option, you can see there's a new dialog box which opens up this dialog box is called as the compute variable dialog box. There are multiple sections here. In the left hand side, you have what is called as a target variable. And the right hand side, you can specify the numeric expression. Let me bring the cursor under the numeric expression. What we are going to do now is we are going to generate random numbers based on uniform distribution. How do we generate random numbers based on uniform distribution? In this section, you can see what is called as function group. There's a list of functions. Now, I will be using a function group which is called as random numbers. When I scroll down, you can see there is an option here which is called as random numbers. So this function group is called as random numbers function group. Below this section, you have another section which says functions and special variables. You can generate random variables based on Bernoulli, beta, binomial, Cauchy, chi-square, so on and so forth. 
let me scroll down and look for the option uniform distribution. The last but one option is RV dot uniform. RV stands for random variable dot uniform. Uniform keyword represents uniform distribution. Let me double click on this particular option. You can see here the function appears in the numeric expression box. It gives a short description here when it says RV dot uniform. There are two input parameters that it expects. The first is the minimum value and the second is the maximum value. This is a numeric variable that we are creating. SPSS gives a short description of this particular function. It says this returns a random value from a uniform distribution with specified minimum and maximum. See also the uniform distribution. So this much of description is sufficient for us to proceed with our analysis. RV dot uniform, there's a question mark. In the first question mark, I'm going to delete and specify zero. And I'm going to delete the second question mark and specify one. So what this does is based on the uniform distribution, it is going to generate a lot of random numbers between the value of zero and one. The random numbers will not exceed one. At the same time, the random numbers will not be less than zero. Once you have specified the minimum and the maximum, there is no hard and fast rule that you should always give this as 0 and 1. For example, you can also give this as 0 and 100. It's entirely up to you. I have to give a meaningful name here. So I'll just call this as rand underscore num. So I'll be generating random numbers based on uniform distribution. At the back, at the background, you can see three variables, employee ID, gender, and salary. Now, when you execute this particular command, you will see here, SPSS will generate the fourth column. To execute this particular function, at the bottom left-hand side, you see an option which is called as the OK button. You can go ahead and click on the OK button. SPSS is displaying the output window. You don't need to worry about the output window. You can just close this particular window. Here, you can see SPSS has created the fourth variable, namely rand underscore num. It has created these random numbers, 0 0.33, 0 0.78, 0 0.81, 0 0.95, so on and so forth. For 100 employees, there's a random number that we have created. Now, you may ask me, what is the use of this? This new column that we have created will help me create two data sets. The first is training data, and the second one is testing data. How do we use this variable to create the training as well as the testing data? As part of the second step, what you need to do is go to the data menu. In the data menu, the last but one option is select cases. I'll repeat, in the data menu, you have the last but one option, which is called as select cases. Let me go ahead and click on select cases button. Once you click on select cases button, you can see there's a new window which pops up, which is called as the select cases window. Here, you have a whole lot of options that you can specify under the select criteria. I'll choose the second button, which says if condition is satisfied, which means cases will be selected only if the if condition is satisfied. This is where the variable that we have just now created, namely random numbers, will be useful. You can select this particular variable and click on the if button, which is present below if condition is satisfied. When you click on this if button, there are four items to the left hand side. The fourth option from the top is random numbers. You can push it into the box to the left hand side. Now, we need 70% for training. How do we specify this? I'm going to say if the random numbers is less than or equal to 0 0.7. Why 0 0.7? because less than 0 0.7 will go into one data set. All those records wherein the random 
number value is less than 0 0.7 will be used in the first data set. Once you have specified this particular filter, you can go ahead and click on the continue button. Once this is done, you can see in the output section, you can click on the second option, which says copy the selected cases to a new data set. So what this is going to do is it's going to apply the earlier filter of random numbers being less than 0 0.7. And we are going to create the data set name as training data. SPSS may have a problem with space. So I'm removing the space. You can just say if the random numbers are less than 0 0.7, create a new data, which is called as training data. Now, you can click on the OK button. Once we have clicked on the OK button, you can see there is no change that is reflected in the source data of employee data set. You can look below at the taskbar. When I hover the mouse on top of the SPSS icon, you can see there are two data sets. This is the employee data set. And here within bracket, you can read the new data set, which is the training data set. Let me select the training data set. You can see here, this is the training data. Let me now, it has all the four variables, employee ID, gender, salary, and random numbers. Let me examine the sample size of this particular data. When I look at the last record, you can see here 71 cases are present. This is because I had specified less than or equal to 0 0.7. So what is the use of this data? you can use this data to build any model. So as part of the second step, what we have done is we have created the training data. But where is the test data? To create the test data, I'll go back to the original data, which is the employee data. Let me reopen the dialog box for select cases. Let me click on data. Scroll to the last but one option, namely select cases. The previous settings are still available to me. I'll just modify this filter condition. How do I mod modify it? Click on the if button. Earlier, I had specified a criteria saying random numbers less than or equal to 0 0.7. Now I will be using greater than value. So if the record has a random number greater than 0 0.7, these cases will be selected. We can click on the option continue. And once you click on the option continue, what you want to do is you want to copy the selected cases to a new data set. The new data set name that we will be providing is test data. So this is the test data that we will be creating. Make sure that the filter criteria is properly specified. Random numbers greater than 0 0.7. Let me now hit the OK button. This is the name of the source data. You will not be able to identify the changes in this particular data. Let me go back to the taskbar. Hover the mouse on top of the SPSS icon. The source data is employee data. Then we have training data. And finally, what we have is the test data. You can see here within bracket, it says test data. When you look at the last record, if we go to the last record, you can see 29 cases, which means roughly 30% of the records, 30% of 100 is, sorry, my apologies, 30%, yeah, 30 of 100 would be around 30 records. So these 30 records are used to create the test data. We began by having one data. You can see here the employee data. So this is the base data which has 100 cases, which has 100 cases. We generated random numbers as part of the first step. As part of the second step, we have created the training data. So this is my training data. The training data has approximately 70% of the cases. We created another data, which is called as the test data. 
So typically, once you have created the training data set and the test data set, you can build the machine learning model on the training data set, pull out your scoring code, get the scoring code and apply the results on the test data. So this is how you can create the training data as well as the test data in SPSS. If there's an easier way of creating the training data set and the test data set, I would request you to post your comments in the comment section. I thank you very much for watching this particular video. I request you to subscribe to my channel. Also like and share my video. Thank you very much once again. Have a great day ahead.